Well, hello and welcome to this episode of the Monday Minute. My name is Ken Freeman and here is what we have for you today. You know, in a previous broadcast, we talked to the group that put together the 28 Days on the Pill. That was a great and detailed expose of what is known as the birth control pill that is actually an abortifacient. And today, I want you to hear from some additional facts that have come from the ABC Link organization that has statistics, has studies, and facts to prove that, in fact, uh, the, uh, there is a link between abortion and breast cancer. And so I want you to see their PowerPoint presentation. I want you to download their PDF. So let's get started with the new ABC Link study. Inside the ABC Link PowerPoint, here is what you're going to discover. First, a little background. You and I both know that NARAL, Pro-Choice America, and Planned Parenthood have launched major attacks on all crisis pregnancy centers, and especially those in urban areas. And why is this? Why? Because your pregnancy center, as an option to the women you serve, are bad for the abortion business. We are hurting their business. We're cutting into their profit. How? Because we inform women of the risk of breast cancer, premature birth, and emotional harm. But of course, we know they say that we're the ones that are lying and misinforming the public. And as they attack us, they show typically these sources when citing their facts that there, they say is no ABC link. Number one, they point to the U.S. National Cancer Institute. But here's a little known fact. The agency also delayed warning the public about the risk of smoking for over three decades because it was subjected to considerable political pressure from tobacco state congressmen. Then the National Breast Cancer Coalition, whose board of directors includes a former NARAL activist and abortion provider, Cynthia Pearson, and the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, whose member physicians perform abortion, and of course the American American Cancer Society, which again delayed its recognition of the risk of smoking for over three decades, just like the other. Also, inside this PowerPoint, you're going to discover eight key sources that the coalition turns to for their facts, including the Catholic Medical Association, the Breast Cancer Prevention Institute, Polycarp Research Institute, Ma Matter Care International, a Breast Care Center, EAMC, and Ethics and Medics, and the American Association of Pro-Life Obstetricians and Gynecologists, and the National Physician Center for Family Resources. Now, as we turn to this PowerPoint, in the details, we're going to learn that abortion does cause breast cancer in four distinct ways. One, by causing the mother to lose the risk-reducing effect of childbearing, which is a well-recognized risk, and by causing her to delay her first full-term pregnancy, which again is a known recognized risk, and then through independent links, meaning that abortion by itself raises the risk independently of the loss of the protective effect of childbearing, leaving her with more places in her breast for cancers to start. And that is the only contested risk. And then by causing her in later pregnancy to have a premature birth before 32 weeks of gestation, this is an uncontested risk that is well known. And what Planned Parenthood and NARAL still don't tell women is that medical authorities and textbooks agree that full-term pregnancy reduces a woman's lifetime risk of breast cancer and that each subsequent full-time pregnancy reduces lifetime risk by 10%. Every year uh, that you delay a first-term pregnancy increases the risk of premenopausal breast cancer by 5 and postmenopausal breast cancer by 3%. And it is further irrefutable that abortion Abortion does cause the mother to lose the protective effect of the full-term pregnancy and thus causes her to have a smaller family and no full-term pregnancies, causing her to delay a first-term pregnancy. And of course, another irrefutable fact is that a woman who has an abortion has a greater breast cancer risk than does the one who has a full-term pregnancy. So let's understand these facts, that a full-term pregnancy reduces the risk, but abortion does not. 
Now, even a paid expert witness for a Florida abortion provider group represented by the Center for Reproductive Law and Policy acknowledged under oath of these risk-reducing effects of full-term pregnancy, and Lynn Rosenberg, in her testimony in 1999, in a lawsuit challenging Florida's parental notice or consent law, she was quoted as saying, a woman finds herself pregnant at 15 will have a higher breast cancer risk if she chooses to abort than if she chooses to carry that pregnancy to term. Of course, now who can uh, deny the worldwide epidemic of breast cancer among women that follows very closely the abortion trend line? Now, much of the long-term underlying increase in incidence among women is due to the historical changes in reproductive patterns, such as delayed childbearing and having few children. And NARAL in Planned Parenthood does not tell women that the World Health Organization lists the birth control pill with its estrogen plus progesterone, which are, by the way, they contain the highest level of cancer-causing agents, but they don't tell them that. And they don't tell them that when they take this by the patch or by the vaginal ring or by injection or by oral that they are putting these high-level cancer-causing agents in their body. A Mayo Clinic meta-analysis found in the use of oral contraceptives before the first full-term pregnancy increased the risk of premenopausal breast cancer by some 40 Four percent, and that was back in 2006. Now, two studies in prominent medical journals have strongly linked the use of the birth control pill with the aggressive, deadly triple negative breast cancer in both 2009 and 2010. Yet, Planned Parenthood refuses to mention this when they hand out their oral contraceptives, which can cause that particularly aggressive and deadly triple negative breast cancer. You know, and this is the form of breast cancer that occurs frequently among women under age 50 and African Americans is associated with with high mortality. And you can get more about this report from the link that we show you here at the abortionbreastcancer.com download abortion breast cancer epid bio preview uh, 2009 PDF. So let me give you three key facts that you can write down right now. The biological reasons for three breast cancer risk are abortion combined oral contraceptives in other words, the pill with estrogen and progesterone and the combined hormone replacement therapy, all are the same. And all three have the risk to do with the effects of the hormone estrogen while it is in the presence of the hormone progesterone on immature cancer-susceptible breast lobules. Evidence that the pill and HRT raise the risk further supports the biological support for the abortion breast cancer link. Abortionists often add fuel to the fire by then giving women the pill after performing abortions on them. Now, this complete PowerPoint contains over 50 key slides and is well documented in great detail, and it will give you all the facts you need for your center. When someone challenges the medical science that you refer to in your brochures, remember that although they admit childbearing reduces breast cancer risk, they contradict themselves by refusing to implicate abortion as a major risk factor for the disease, and that reveals their intellectual dishonesty. Now with that, I will bring this Monday Minute to a close by saying that if you want to download the full PowerPoint, please visit or call Karen Malik at the Coalition on Abortion Breast Cancer at www.abortionbreastcancer.com or the www.bcpinstitute.org and Tell them that Ken Freeman sent you. Now remember, until we meet again, keep up the good work you're doing. You are making a difference, and the other side just can't stand it.